Anthony Roberts, greeting you in the name of the Lord Jesus from the five gospel halls here in Tobago. We want to thank you for tuning in to our weekly telecast, Moments with Truth, and it is our prayer that as you view this program, that you will receive a blessing from the Lord. Those who are saved, we trust that you will be strengthening your faith and your walk with the Lord Jesus. Those who are not saved, it is our prayer that you will trust the Lord Jesus and be saved for time and for eternity. You can contact us by calling 796-0979 or 283-2222. At the close of the telecast, you will see our various locations here in Tobago and the various meetings, and you are welcome to attend. May God richly bless you as you view this program. Have a great day. Welcome again, uh, viewers, to Moments with Truth, and we are glad that you can join us again. Continue, continue to listen or look in or view into TIN. It's, it's important that you look and learn, and uh, God is going to bless. So we want to welcome you as we go into our lesson today. We're going to be looking at light. And uh, before we do this, let's just... Look to the Lord in prayer as per usual, ask God's blessing upon today's message. Father and God, we are again thankful for the opportunity of coming into thy word, coming into the viewers area to show them, to give them the opportunity for them to know that God is light and thus he can bring light into their hearts. We are thankful, O oh God, for the access we have, the word of God. And we are praying that many will look and live. We think, Lord, not only of ourselves here, but elsewhere, those who proclaim the good news, the gospel. We pray for them. There are countries that are uh, under turmoil at this moment, wars, and all sorts of things. And there are many who are in those countries that are presenting truth. We pray for them. We pray that you will help them. Help us even here. We want to think of our nation. We want to think of those at the helm, the president, the prime minister, the chief secretary. We pray for them. We want to even pray for the youth, the young people. Pray for them too as well. New wave of crime in the schools. And we are asking, Lord, that you will touch those young people hard, that they will call you blessed before it is too late. We are praying for them. We are praying for parents, the relationship between parents and children. Lord, touch in a mighty way. Let love flow in the household. Let them be able to come once again around thy word and be blessed thereby. Bless us now as we go into thy word. As we look there, Lord, help us open our understanding that the simplicity of the truth will come home to us and many will say, yes, indeed, our God is good. Bless us now, giving thee thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, dear friends, uh, we are going to be looking at light the light of the world, the light of life, the Lord Jesus Christ being the light of life. And it tells us there in the book of uh, Romans chapter uh, 12, even in the book of John chapter 8, and many other passages tells us about the light, John's gospel chapter 8 and verse 12. It tells us there, Then speak Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jesus is speaking, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So for us to really get an understanding of light, we have to go to the, the beginning of the word of God, the, the beginning of the Bible. And there it is, God spoke into being. In uh, chapter 1 of Genesis, he said, let there be light. And that uh, one in chapter 1 there, in chapter 1, verse 3, let there be light. I can read it for you. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Genesis 1 and 4 tells us, and God saw the light, that it was good. 
and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And evening and the morning was the first day. Now, you'll notice that in uh, chapter 1, verse 3, he said, let there be light. He brought light into being. He brought light into being. But when you go down to the lower down in the chapter, when in the fourth day of creation, in uh, verse 14, you will see there, he said, let there be lights. He talked about the lights, the sun, the moon, the stars. And that is what ruling over the day and the night. He talked about lights. So I figured the, uh, the, the first light he spoke of was the cosmic light. That is truth coming into darkness. Electrostatic light as it were. And that is a light that is, is, is beyond our imagination. But when it comes down to the verse 14, he says there, and uh, let the lights in the firmament in heaven divide the day from the night and let them be as a sign and for a season and the days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light unto the earth as it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule by day, as we know it, and the lesser light to rule by night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament and the heaven to give light unto the earth. And in verse 18, And to rule over the day and over the night and divide the light from the darkness, God saw that it was good. It was good, the daylight and the night, light in the night. Oh, when God made uh, the heavens and the earth, when God created all things, he said all the things, Every time he created something each day, he said it is very, it's good. But when he reached a man, he said it is very good. Very good. And it's good for us to observe that. Oh man, God, wonderful creation. He loved man, he created man. So we're looking at lights. Light. Light, we're told, is a form of energy that makes it possible for us to see. A form of energy that makes it possible for us to see a brightness that it produces. It may come from the sun, it may come from uh, fire, it may come from the moon, it may come from the stars as we were talking about. It may come from a, a lamp or uh, even today in our modern day world a bulb which sends forth light that we'll be able to see. There's the physical light, there's the physical light and that is, and there's also the spiritual light. The physical light and the spiritual light. What I'm saying here is the natural light, the spiritual, uh, the, the physical light, which is what we know of today. Without light, you cannot see. You live in darkness. Without the physical light, we cannot see. We live in darkness. As it is in the spirit, so it is in the, the, the natural. As it is in the, the natural, so it is in the spiritual. And hear what it tells us from the word of God. This then is the message which we have heard of him that declare unto you, God is light. God is light and in him is no darkness. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. The light that shineth in the darkness. So my dear friend, we are presenting to you light. The Lord Jesus, the one who is able to give us light. We have lights in our houses, we have lights in our cities, all our areas here, we live with lights. And uh, we move, and this is very important, almost all walks of life, there is light. There is light shining, showing you the way. That's in the physical. But let us hear what the Word of God says in the spiritual, in the Psalm 119, 105. tells us there, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word of God will direct you, a light unto your path. It also tells us there, uh, the entrance of thy word, it giveth light, it giveth understanding. So when the word comes into your heart, my dear friend, light comes in. The Lord Jesus Christ is light in himself and we will be able to show you from the word of God that he is able to give you the light that you will understand and know what it is to follow in his path. In the book of Samuel, in the Old Testament, 2 Samuel chapter 22, 29. For thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. Thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the light, uh, the, the Lord, the, li um, the light will lighten my darkness. God is going to lighten your darkness. You do not need to walk in darkness. 
You can walk in light. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now when I say darkness, we talk of the evil that is upon the earth today. Men's hearts are filled with evil, dark deeds, doing that which is contrary to truth. Oh, murders, all sorts of things. We, we repeated that for you in time and time again. You know it, you're seeing it, that the heart of man is desperately wicked, deceitful above all, walking in darkness. He needs the light of life. He needs the light of life. And how he can get this light into his life? He can receive Jesus as his personal savior. Receive Jesus as your personal savior and the light will come in and you will see things differently. Oh, light is, is, is something that uh, makes our vision possible. It is necessary. It's important. It's the sustenance of life. Without it, we may not be here. Uh, I can't say we would not exist because there are parts of the ocean full of depth. There is no light, sunlight and, and, and creatures, they, they exist there. But it, it is part of our sustenance. We cook with light. You would surprise to know all those things we see and, and move and function in the light. So it is in the spiritual. So it is in the spiritual. Uh, the, the word of God tells us there yeah, is very important for us that um, to know that the light of the world, Jesus is the light of the world and he's able to shine in our hearts and give us the victory. We're talking about practical light or, the, or physical light as we, as we are told. And uh, a little history on it. We are told that light is one of the fastest things upon the earth. About 182,281 miles per second. That's fast. That's fast. And uh, uh, that's the, how light travels. Light travels is even faster than sound. And uh, light, we know that can reach distance just in a blink. So that's the speed of light. But we are going in to what is known as the spiritual aspect or the spiritual illumination, which is opening the individual understanding. The individual understanding light, enlightening them in a light, enlightening them to truth. This is what we are dealing with, a true representation of who God is and a truth brought to us a truth brought to the forefront of man's mind. This is what the light is able to do. Come into your hearts and give you an opportunity to bring forth truth in your life. Truth, light. I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. This light is able to shine in your hearts and give you the freedom. Yeah, what we are told here in the, in the book of uh, John. And um, in John's Gospel, chapter 1, we read it for you. You may not have your Bible. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. You're talking about that. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. And there was a man sent from God, as I mentioned before, whose name was John. The same came to Jesus, oh sorry, for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteneth every man that cometh into the world. True light, that lighteneth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. And it goes on. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as receive him, as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. What a great privilege we have to receive the Lord Jesus Christ and become a child of God. We are not all God's children. We are all God's creation. But the minute you accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart, you are born again into the family of God. You become a child of God. And this is important for us to know. So we become children of God because of the light that is shed abroad in the hearts of men, because of Jesus. When we receive him into our hearts, the true light that lighteneth every man in this world. And it goes on. Very important. So we see there that God is telling us, that it is very important that we know Jesus as our personal Savior. Oh, when John saw Jesus, 
coming to him on the banks of the river, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin. Now be very careful, the S-I-N of the world. He took away that major cause. If you come to him, he will take away that S-I-N. There's a difference, and I mentioned that before. There's a difference between S-I-N and S-I-N-S. -S. One is the root, and the other one are the byproduct of the root, which are the fruits. The sins that we commit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess, he's faithful and just to forgive us. But Christ died to take away that sin problem. That's why you need to come to him. You need the light to come into your heart. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And God's saying that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So light is important. And we're presenting to you the light of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who is able to give you life. Light was always accompanying the presence of God. We talk about the presence of God. His expression is in love, in light. In light, God's love, God's expression of love is in light. Is in light. And we see there he's also his holiness. You can see it in the light of God. He's clothed in light. He's also a garment of light. And a lot of things we can say concerning God in himself as he presents and he come unto man. Paul, the apostle Paul on the road to Damascus, about to go and persecute the Christians. A light appeared unto him, so strong that it knocked him down onto the ground. He was blinded. And then he realized that in that light, he saw the one who he was persecuting. Saul, Saul, Paul, Paul. His name was Saul, but he changed to Paul. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And we know the lesson very well, and God was able to tell him, look, he will give him his sight go to the, the city, etc., etc., etc. So the light, God is able to shine abroad in the hearts of men. Paul saw that light and he got, he was convicted. And that was the light does, it convicts. When that light comes into your heart, my dear friend, it will convict you of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. And there's where you have to make that decision to receive Jesus as your personal say. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So God is able to shine that light in your heart. Receive Jesus today. This is important. This is very important. This is a faithful saying. Paul is also saying this because of his transform transformation in that he's a new creature now. He so said, this is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He considered himself among the chief. So here it is, salvation is yours. He came to save sinners. And that's why we are sharing this with you, my dear friend. For God so loved the world, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, we are told in the days of old that God in his light had led the people of, uh, of Israel through the wilderness. Wilderness journey, he, he took them by night. The pillar of light, the pillar of fire. They were able to see where they were going. And uh, even though when they, they, the enemy come upon them, he was able to separate the enemies, the enemy, sorry, from them. So God is light indeed. Even in, uh, in, in, we see in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, that when he was on the Mount of, uh, of Transfiguration there, the, the, the disciples, they saw him, James, Peter, and John. And it was a glow they could not understand. They could not understand. They wanted to build tabernacles for he, uh, Elias, and uh, uh, Moses. Three tabernacles, but the word of God came forth to them. This is my beloved son. Hear he him. And this is what we are telling you today. Listen to the word of God. Hear what he's saying. We are trying to do all sorts of things to get to God, but God is simply saying, repent. Repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for the saving of your soul. So light has come into the world that man was able to move from darkness because men love darkness rather than light. But God has sent forth his light so that man can remove the darkness or remove from darkness into his marvelous light. Into his marvelous light. Oh, we are glad to know that uh, the word of God tells us that there's a joy for us that awaits us in high heavens. In Revelation chapter 21, 23, and the city 
had no need of sun. You're talking there about, uh, even in the book of Revelation chapter 22, we, let's quote that first part and tells us there, and there shall be no night there, that's where we're going, there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Verse 23, and the city had no need for sun, there is no need for the sun, neither the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it. The glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Oh, we are thankful for the light of God. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And God is saying that this Lamb has come in, this light has come in, the light of life, so that you can obtain salvation today. Oh, the word of God tells us, arise. In Isaiah 60 and 1, arise and shine for the light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Oh, how important it is. Arise and shine for the light is come. Awake thou out of sleep, thou sleepest. Arise and shine for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Oh, we are thankful for the light of life. The light that is able to give us the freedom to worship him in spirit and in truth. You know, men today, they live in all sorts of uh, uh, various areas of their, their life. It's questionable what they're being doing with their life. Some of them uh, go off into violence. Some of them go off into strange things. Some of them go off into necromancy. Uh, the, the occult world underhand, doing all sorts of wrong things. God is saying, my dear friend, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. When you turn your back upon truth, when you turn your back upon that light, the light that God had sent forth into the world to shine into the hearts of men, you end up into a lost eternity. Oh, that same book of Revelation tells us the book will open and the books Books were opened, and the men were judged according to the things that were written in the book, and whose name was not found written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It was cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. We would not want that to happen to you. We want you to be in that city where there is no need for light. Oh, neither the sun, but the light of the Lamb would be there, and we will enjoy His presence. Oh, there is something about the light that comes from God. It draws you closer to him and give you a warmth, a feeling, bring love within your heart and bring joy within your heart, bring redemption within your heart, salvation, all these things, and give you the beauty of the one who has created light. So my dear friend, light of life, the light of light, the Lord Jesus Christ said it, if you follow me, you will not walk in darkness but you'll have the light of life. I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. God wants to give you that abundant life in Christ Jesus. So I hope that these little thoughts will bring to your remembrance. You can read it from the Word of God. Go into the Word of God and hear what God has to say about light. There's also a light that can strike you down, my dear friend. The light of the judgment of God that will put upon mankind. Depart from me into everlasting fire. I know thee not. Oh, that would be a sad time. But we are thankful for the light of love, which is able to say, come. Come unto me, those who are heavenly laden, and I will give thee rest. So I hope that these thoughts will bless your heart. And dear my friend, remember that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, for his name's sake. Amen, amen, amen. And let's just pray and ask God if you have willing to make that decision to receive Jesus into your heart. Don't be afraid. You ask him to come into your heart and save you. Recognize that you're a sinner and you need a savior. As by one man sin entered into the world, dead by sin. So death was passed upon all. For all have sinned and come short of his glory. We do give thee thanks for salvation. So let's pray. Father, we are thankful for the opportunity of hearing about the light of life. Oh, the light that came into the world. John spoke of it. The light 
that is able to shed abroad in the hearts of men. And we are praying this morning, we are praying today, whatever time this broadcast is going forth, that those within the sound of our voices will say, yes, Lord, come into my heart and save me. Repent of their sins and ask God to forgive them. Bless their God as we wait upon thee. We do ask for your guidance. Again, we pray for our nation. We pray, Lord, for the, the young people of our nation, elderly ones. Bless us all. Forgive us of our sins. Lord, continue to strengthen us and let us live for thee. Lord, we are thankful that thou art able to give life. Bless their God in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless. Anthony Roberts, greeting you in the name of the Lord Jesus from the five gospel halls here in Tobago. We want to thank you for tuning in to our weekly telecast, Moments with Truth, and it is our prayer that as you view this program, that you will receive a blessing from the Lord. Those who are saved, we trust that you will be strengthened in your faith and your walk with the Lord Jesus. Those who are not saved, it is our prayer that you will trust the Lord Jesus and be saved for time and for eternity. You can contact us by calling 796-0979 or 283-2222. At the close of the telecast, you'll see our various locations here in Tobago and the various meetings, and you are welcome to attend. May God richly bless you 